So when it comes to recommending supplements, there are two basics that I put for almost everybody with every condition, no matter what they have coming into the office. And the reason for that, are these are clear dietary deficiencies that we have now. Um, the first is omega-3 fats, and the second is vitamin D. Omega-3 fats, we used to have a lot in our diet. We just have a hard time getting them into our diet right now. The food sources are different. It's hard to eat a lot of fish because of the mercury content that's there. Kids don't particularly care for fish sometimes, which also makes it more difficult. And it's actually viewed as probably one of the biggest dietary deficiencies and, and, and so supplement deficiencies that we have in the United States behind vitamin D. It's also been linked to a number of conditions. When you look at low omega-3 levels, it's been seen in kids with attention deficit disorder, and there's numerous studies out there now looking at it in almost everything from attention deficit disorder to anxiety to depression to cancer to Crohn's disease. I mean, go down the list. Almost every condition that's out there, uh, omega-3s have been looked at in some way, shape, or form. Um, the, I, I refer to them as sort of a nature's non-steroidal, okay, because the way it's meta they get metabolized, they actually act as an anti-inflammatory in the body. But not only that, they're critical in terms of the brain and the brain function and all of the different fats that are in the brain. One of the primary fats in the brain that we only get through food is DHA. And it's really important that we have this in our, uh, our intake of our food on a daily basis or in our intake of our body on a daily basis. Um, EPA is viewed a little bit more as an anti-inflammatory. It's one of the other omega-3 fats that's part of fish oil. DHA is the other one. And people say to me all the time, what should be the ratio? We don't really know what the ratio should be. I like to get a lot of both. I like the DHA more for the brain, and I like the EPA a little bit more for the anti-inflammatory nature in the body. Um, the biggest problem I have with children is they don't like them, okay? <laughs> they just don't like the taste. They don't like the flavor. They fight it all all the time and there's very little out there that even though it's improved in terms of the uh, the flavors over time that the kids that we've been able to really get ones that kids really say boy I'm I like it and I'll take it on a regular basis the second biggest problem with this is the concentration very often the concentration of the DHA and the EPA in the fish oil can actually be below what we want from a therapeutic dose. So for example, a therapeutic dose in most conditions of omega-3 fats is 1 to 2,000 milligrams a day. Certain products may only have 50 milligrams per dose, and sometimes the whole bottle is actually required in order to get a single therapeutic dose. And this is one of the real dilemmas with pediatric um, supplements, is that the actual dose doesn't match with what you're actually getting in, because it says pediatric but doesn't have the therapeutic dose. I get questioned all the time, are there studies out there that show the benefits of the omega-3s, particularly in, for these common conditions that are out there, um, like attention deficit disorder and anxiety. Right now, the last time I reviewed it, there's about 13 studies looking at the use of omega-3 in children um, with attention deficit disorder, and the preponderance of the evidence is that this is helpful. Some of the studies that didn't show benefit actually probably didn't show benefit because the amount that was used was actually pretty low. In some studies, they used massive doses. They actually used like 16,000 milligrams to see a direct correlation between the change in omega-3s and the change in behavior. Having said that, the most of the studies, you don't need that much. You just need enough to actually get a, a, th a true therapeutic dose of the omega-3 in. If you look at it in depression and anxiety, not a lot in terms of studying it in children per se, but a lot of it has been extrapolated from the adult population down into the pediatric population. And again, many of the kids we're seeing aren't just little kids, they're teenagers and, and what have you. Um, and there are numbers of studies that have looked at it in anxiety and depression. And again, the preponderance of the evidence is, is that there, there's an improvement with the use of these. We always have to remember that when we talk about integrative care, we're not really looking at a magic bullet. What we're looking at is how do we incorporate the most healing aspects into the body so that all of the pieces together help for the patient's condition, not just one thing. It, that's not really what we're looking at. We're looking at pulling all the pieces together.